Hello everybody, my name is Jay and I'm one of the expert OET teachers at E2 Language. In this lesson, this live class, what we're going to do is look at OET writing and we're going to look at the first three skills that you need. Already the first of a three-step method. If you're an E2 Language member, you will know what the three-step method is. In short, you need to be able to select case notes. This is the first imperative skill that you select relevant case notes. The second is that you have the ability to transform them into grammatical sentences and also synthesize them into grammatical sentences. You might need to combine a bunch of case notes, for example. The third step of the method then is to organize the case notes into logic coherent letter. So we're going to look at selecting case notes. This seems like an easy thing to do, but it's it's got a lot of subtlety to it. There's actually, it's it's quite challenging and there's a lot of things that you probably need to understand in order to select the right case notes. So we're going to have a look at this letter here that I've just prepared earlier. So it's going to be for nurses, but even if you're a doctor or a physio, let's just go through this one together. All right. Now, on test day, the first thing you should do is, well, skip all the case notes. Because what you need to do in that reading time, you have five minutes reading time. What you need to do first is understand who you are writing to. Because when you understand who you're writing to, this will inform which case notes you select. Think about the difference between writing to a physiotherapist or a home nurse or a dentist versus a medical doctor. Think about the difference between whether the dentist knows the patient or it's the first time that the dentist is seeing the patient. All of these clues are held in the task. And that's right at the bottom of the letter, okay? These four things here. These, inst by the way, there's, I've put four here just, just because I want to show you the difference between what it means to write to somebody who knows the patient versus write to somebody who doesn't know the patient. On test day, you'll have one task with one person to write to. But this is just an example of some different people. So. Let's have a look at this. Look at number one, for example. Let's read this one. It says, using the information given in the case notes, write a referral letter to home care nurse John Walker, who will take over Jane's home care. Just read that to yourself one more time. What can we ascertain? What can we understand from this task? Okay, first we can understand that we're writing a referral letter. Second, we're writing to a home care nurse. These are all important things that we need to understand. But have, have a look at this third part, this part here. John Walker, who will take over Jane's home care. Just type into the chat, does this home care nurse know Jane or not? Yes or no? Does John Walker know Jane? Yes or no? Put it into the chat, please. Good. Right. Correct. John Walker, who will take over, obviously does not know Jane. So that will change things dramatically. Because then when we go to the case notes, all of a sudden, things like medical history will become relevant because John doesn't know Jane. And so now we might need to inform John about Jane's medical history, such as she was born premature and has cerebral palsy. When she was two weeks old, she had a stroke. She's non-ambulatory. She uses a power wheelchair for mobility. Now let's compare this, let's compare this with number two. This is a different task. Imagine you get this one on test day and it says, using the information given in the case notes, write a referral letter to Jane's 
home care nurse, John Walker, who is responsible for her continued home care. Just quickly type into the chat, does John Walker know Jane in number two? Yes or no? Does John know Jane? Yes. Right, good. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. So now all of a sudden this changes the selection of the case notes because we go back up here and we go to medical history. Now, will John Walker, number two, need to know about Jane's cerebral palsy or the fact that she's non-ambulatory and she uses a power wheelchair? No. Right. Interesting. 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 Cool. Let's go back down. Let's look at the third, whoops, I've realized there's a mistake here. Let me fix that. Number three, using the information given in the case notes, write a referral letter to physiotherapist John Walker. Now, this one's a little bit less clear, but just have a guess. Does John Walker know Jane? Does this physiotherapist know Jane? Yes or no? Good, yeah. Yeah, people say no, and I and I agree with you. I think it's also no, and and Ji Yong's probably got the best answer there, which is probably no, probably no. But but let's compare that with this one here, number four. It says using information given in the case notes, write a referral letter to Jane's physiotherapist, John Walker. So does John know Jane? Yes or no? Yes, I agree. And I mean, it's a tiny little thing here that's made the difference. Have a look at this. This is this is a tiny little, look at this, apostrophe S, Jane's physiotherapist. There you go. So that very small little bit of grammar and punctuation there has now told us that in fact, Jane knows John Walker and therefore this will determine an entirely different selection of case notes compared to if John didn't know Jane. And so reading the task is absolutely critical that you get that right. And paying attention to tiny little details such as Jane apostrophe S can make the difference between you getting a, a, an OET A, B or a C or a D because who knows what case notes you will select. Cool. So now we're thinking about the difference between, okay, we've got a We've got a home care nurse, and now we've got a, a physiotherapist. So let's think about this and look at some of these case notes here. Okay, physiotherapist. Let's see. Well, what's going to be relevant for the physiotherapist here? Well, it depends. Does a, let's say the physiotherapist number uh, 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 three who does not know Jane. Yes, he'll probably need to know about the cerebral palsy, uh, certainly that she's non-ambulatory. Now, will the physiotherapist need to know that Jane's past surgical history when she was 13 months old had eye surgery to align eyes? No, the physiotherapist, that's not in his domain. What about the social aspects here? Does the physiotherapist need to know that Jane lives alone? Well, maybe, maybe, maybe. Anyway, this is what we're going to do today. I'm going to do a little checklist with you. We're going to look at a document. Let me just get that document out, by the way. And we're going to go through, and I'm going to get you, because you guys are the actual experts here. Uh-oh, where's my document gone? Why has it disappeared? Hold on. Hold on, I've lost my document. Why did it close? Anyway, it did close. Cool, all right. You're the expert. Maybe you can help me actually, because I don't really know the answer to what is relevant and what is irrelevant. I'm the English teacher. However, I sort of have a bit of an idea, but you're the experts. Let's have a look at this document here. So this is the same thing. I've got the, the category here, like name, age, residence, data visit, medical history. It's the same one that we looked at before with Jane Doe. These are the case notes on the second column here. So medical history, born premature, cerebral palsy, two weeks old stroke, cause cerebral palsy. And here we have four potential readers of the letter. We've got the home care nurse known to Jane. In other words, 
Jane's home care nurse. We've got the home care nurse unknown to Jane. We've got the physio known and we've got the physio unknown. So let's go through. Just realized I'm going to have a difficult time doing this. Let's go through and, 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 and. Okay, let me just talk you through this. I'm going to talk you through the easy ones and then we'll go through the hard ones together. So name, yes, home care nurse. Let's do the home care known nurse first. Age, yes, we need that information. Residence, does the home care nurse known need to know where Jane lives? No, it's irrelevant. It's, it's in fact, I'm going to do non-applicable, not applicable. Whoopsie, what have I done there? Not applicable. What about date of visit? Uh, yes, we'll need to do that. Born premature, uh, not applicable. Cerebral palsy, put into the chat. What Known homes need to know about this. Good, yes, yes, yes. Why have I lost this one again? What's going on here? Hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm going to have trouble doing this. So I'm manipulating some documents. Okay, fine. Cool. Uh, right. How am I going to do this? I'm going to do it like this. I'm going to go through. You're going to have a pen. You're going to go yes, no, yes, no, or yes, not applicable, or tick, not applicable, tick, not applicable, etc. Okay? Let's do it like this. So cerebral palsy. Yes or not applicable? Two weeks old stroke caused cerebral palsy. Relevant or not applicable? Non-ambulatory, so Jane cannot walk. Relevant or not applicable? Power wheelchair for mobility. Relevant or not applicable. So now we're onto the case note, the category of past surgical history. The case note is that at 13 months of age, Jane had eye surgery to align the eyes. Relevant or not applicable? Family history unknown, relevant or not applicable? What about medications? Relevant or not applicable to the nurse who knows Jane? What about the medical scripts filled at Rite Aid, which must be um, a pharmacy, I'm guessing. Relevant or not applicable? Medications are delivered by the pharmacy. Relevant or not applicable to Jane's home care nurse? Physical review, height, five foot, skin intact, appetite good, no difficulty chewing or swallowing, relevant, not applicable, vision, astigmatism, near and far sighted, wears glasses, hearing and speech within normal limits, occasional bladder incontinent, wears incontinent briefs when out for long periods, continent of bowel, Toileted via mobility lift four to five times a day. All right, let's keep going. Upper extremity, left hand functions pretty well, right hand immobile. Receives physiotherapy weekly. Improvement notes in inflexibility and strength to right leg. Left leg remains weak. Moderate core muscle strength. Client stretches in bed to keep self limber. I've just had a better idea of how to do this. Let's try it this way. Hold on. Let's go back up to the top and let's compare case notes across, across here. This is the wild world of digital teaching, by the way, so I'm experimenting. All right. Now, let's do this. So, name. Let's do it. Home care nurse known. Yes. Home care nurse on. Yes. Physio, physio. Yes. They all need to know Jane's name. Uh, yes, they all need to know Jane's age, okay? Residence, home care nurse known, no. What about home care nurse unknown? Yes, physio known, 
No. Physio unknown. Yes. Date of visit. They all need to know that. Born premature. I cannot think of a way to teach this without looking at the chat. It's impossible. Give me one second. I need to sort of do something here so I can see the chat while I teach or else it's going to be impossible. Ah, let me do this. Let me work this out. Let me work this out. Let me push all of that to the side and let me push this document here. That's not going to work. Um, hold on. So much for my great idea here. Hold on. How can I do this? How can I do this? Um, I don't think it's going to work. I don't think it's going to work. All right. How's this? <laughs> I don't think this is going to work. So what I'm going to do then is I'm going to do it. And then you're just going to listen. Then you'll tell me if you have any discrepancies with mine. Okay. So this is going to be, I'm sorry, it'll be a bit of me teaching you. And then you can argue with me at the end. And I'm happy to argue with you about whether something's relevant or irrelevant. You have the medical knowledge. I have the sort of English language teaching and OET knowledge. Let's do it like this. I'll go first. You listen. If you disagree, I want you to make a note. Then I'll look at the chat. And we'll sort of uh, think about whether a particular case note was relevant or relevant according to those four, uh, four readers of the letter. Let's try this. Let's try this. The wild world of online education. Here we go. Medical history. Well, home care nurse, known, absolutely not. Yes. So whoever is unknown needs to know about the medical history, okay? The known professions do not. So yes. Yes, yes, and yes. Same with the physiotherapist who is unknown to Jane. They need to know about this. Now, family history, family history. Is this relevant for anybody? Because it's just a kind of poor case note. It just says unknown. So you know what? I think this is going to be not applicable, not applicable for anybody because we don't want to waste our precious case notes. One of the big problems that I see with OET students when they write is they include too many case notes. Now, one of the things the OET does is they give you more case notes than you need. You have a word limit of between 180 and 200 words in the body of the letter. That means that you must ignore case notes. It means that you should only select relevant ones and almost to an extent only select very relevant ones because in some cases you could probably argue that family history is unknown. Maybe for the home care nurse that might be semi-relevant but it's better to ignore semi-relevant case notes than to include them because then your word count will exceed the word limit and you'll have problems. All right, let's go to medication. So um, I've forgotten the categories. What are they? Known, unknown. Okay, fine. So home care nurse who knows Jane, not applicable. Home care nurse who does not know Jane, yes, applicable, not applicable. Same for the physiotherapist there. So we could start to see what's applicable and not applicable according to who knows Jane. Let's skip this because I want to start to think about the nurse versus the physiotherapist. So let's have a look at some of these case notes here. And I want to think about, okay, let's have a look at, let's have a look at this one here. Let's check this case note here. Okay, receives physiotherapy weekly, improvement noted in flexibility and strength to right leg. So home care nurse known to Jane, this is going to not be relevant. Is this going to be relevant to the home care nurse who does not know Jane, the one you're introducing Jane to? It might be slightly relevant. In fact, a part of it might be relevant. So we might take this part, for example, and paste it here. 
we might not include the detail about the improvement noted in the flexibility and strength of leg, but we might mention to this home care nurse that, oh, by the way, Jane does receive home care physiotherapy once a week or whatever it is. But there's no need to go into the detail here. However, if we're talking about or if we're referring to the physiotherapist, obviously the one who does not know Jane, we want to include all of this case note here because this is particularly relevant to the physiotherapist. So here we've seen an example of how a partial case note can be relevant versus a complete case note for a different reader. Uh, same here, left leg remains weak. Okay, does, is this relevant for the, for, the, for the nurse? Well, probably not applicable for either nurse here, but it's definitely going to be applicable for both, or both physiotherapists, I would suggest. Same here, we've got one about moderate core muscle strength. We're writing to the home care nurse. I would suggest that this will be not applicable to both, whether they know Jane or not. And I would suggest that these will be both applicable to the physiotherapist. And again, client stretches in bed to keep self not really that applicable to the home care nurse. And yes, I would suggest that these will both be applicable to the physiotherapist. What about diet in notes? I would suggest that both nurses will need to know this and I would suggest that this will be irrelevant for both physiotherapists because they're not concerned with Jane, uh, Jane's diet rather. Okay, now we get down to the management plan because this is, this is a little bit different. Usually, usually all of the management plan, plan will be relevant to your reader. Okay. All of that information, I mean, why you're sort of referring this person because in that management plan or discharge plan at the, in the end of the case notes there, usually it'll have sort of three, four or five things, five ca separate case notes. Usually they will all be relevant. So what I'm trying to do here probably won't work that well because it's more tailored towards a home care nurse rather than a physiotherapist. But let's just... Let's just have a little think about this anyway. So management plan, here's the first case note, require aid increase one hour a week. So this is gonna be relevant for uh, both nurses. And aid increase, well, it depends what your definition of aid increase means. And I'm thinking, I'm thinking relevant because it could mean physiotherapy aid or it could mean nursing aid. It's a little bit ambiguous. What about this one here? Aides do not have enough time to complete personal care and other tasks. Okay, this changes a little bit. But I guess what I guess what it's all about is using your using your professional knowledge, thinking about what's relevant and irrelevant. But I think the next step beyond that is thinking about okay. We've got a case note, is it partially relevant? That's probably the third step. Well, the first step is relevant, irrelevant. Second step is, is the entire case note relevant or do I just need a part of it? That's also something to think about. Uh, let's keep looking at these. So, okay, here's an interesting one because now we move more into the idea of partially relevant or fully relevant. So poor upper extremity and lower extremity mobility. Okay, interesting. Well, this part, this first part is certainly going to be relevant to both, I imagine. Now we move into a second part of the case note where it says requires assistance seven days a week with bathing and uh, after midday care, grooming, dressing, transfers, toileting, meal preparation, breakfast, lunch, dinner, help with microwave, household chores, and laundry. This sort of says to me that this is relevant for the, for the nurse, but uh, this will be irrelevant for the, for the physiotherapist here. 
this these case notes, of course, are not. It it would never probably be this tricky for you, but I guess what I'm thinking of case notes. Think critically. Uh, yes, let's have a look at what you've written in the chat because I'm interested to see if you have any differences of opinion or anything like that. So Jay Young says, I'm not sure how long known home care nurse or physio haven't contacted Jane or how far they have missed Jane's information, thus how much of medical history or treatment I should include. If unsure, should I just include most relevant or significant information? All right, good question. Okay, if Jane knows the physiotherapist, how long has she known the physiotherapist for? That's probably something territory that I wouldn't enter into. If it just says, write a letter to Jane's physiotherapist, you can assume that this is a recent um, engagement, that they've, they have known each other for a long time and they still know each other. There's nothing about reminding people. I've, I've never seen anything in the OET case notes about that. But do read the task carefully. But what I would suggest is I don't think the OET go into that level of complexity. I think they just sort of say, okay, does Jane know the physiotherapist or not? Nothing about duration of length or time of how long they've known them for. Um, any other questions about selecting case notes that you have there? I've just realized this is a funny little webinar. I'm sorry, it wasn't great. I believe skin intact is relevant for both professions. Good, I agree actually, because the physiotherapist will be uh, doing exercises with Jane and probably manipulating her legs and stuff like that. So I agree with you, Zach. I think skin intact would be an important case note for both nurses, uh, certainly the unknown nurse, and also relevant for both physiotherapists, known and unknown, I agree. Jay Young, are we likely to receive this type of question writing a letter to a known healthcare professional? It completely depends, um, Jay Young. I've seen OET letters that, most of the letters I've seen are writing to an unknown reader. And un like you're referring or you're discharging Jane to a new person who, who doesn't know Jane. And you'd be, very few OET people, we, we do feedback for the OET. So if you buy a feedback voucher from the OET and you complete the writing, you said E2 language actually does the marking. And one of the letters for the nursing is writing to, um, writing to a patient's Jonathan GP, Jonathan apostrophe SGP. Amazing how many people miss that, uh, that Jonathan knows the doctor, which informs the selection of case notes and how you structure the letter and everything. So it's a critical skill to be able to identify whether the patient knows the, the medical person or not. But usually it will be an unknown, okay? But be careful. Fatima, what does AIDS do? Uh, what if the aides do not have enough time to complete the tasks? Uh, oh, okay, okay, let's have a look at that. Let's have a look at this case note here. Um, where on the discharge plan? Okay, you can see this is an interesting one, Fatima. It says, okay, so the management plan is that Jane requires an aide, somebody to help her, for one hour, one extra hour a week, because it says aides, plural, do not have time to complete personal care and other tasks. So if we're writing to, let's just focus on these two case notes here in the management plan. If we're writing to John Walker, who will take over Jane's home care, i.e. he doesn't know Jane, we're going to have to say to John Walker, okay, Jane has several aides. It doesn't really say with what, but she requires one extra hour per week. So this might be actually the critical information in why we're writing to John Walker. So we might start our letter by saying, dear Mr. Walker or dear John, 
I am writing to refer Jane Doe into your care, into your care for additional home help. Additional home help. So that might be the critical little phrase where the OET examiner looks at your letter and goes, ah, great. This person understood that management plan wasn't about taking over the entire care of Jane Doe. It was about adding a, an extra bit of time to Jane Doe's care, okay? Again, would it be that subtle in the OET? I don't really know, but this is the kind of level of critical reading that you need to be able to do in that five minutes of reading time. Good question, well done. Um, cool, any other questions, any other questions? <laughs> so I don't want to scare you. I don't want to scare you. I'm sure you are you're all great nurses and doctors and you can you know what you're looking at. But there's also the the problem on test day of having pressure and being nervous. And I think probably what you need to do on test day is is uh think through that pressure. I know you'll be nervous, but you need to concentrate on what you're reading and and make those decisions. Try and make informed, clear decisions on test day. So, this one, it was a bit of a shamble. I, it's the first time I've, I've done this one. Um, yes, it obviously didn't work that well. Anyway, next time I'll work out how to fix it up. Jay Young's got another question. Um, in the listening subtest, can I still write or check my answers for part A during recording for instruction for part B? Is ah, um, okay. So this question is the answer to this one is I don't know if they collect your test papers between the lis listening part A and listening part B. I, I they give you, listening part A, you have a lot of time to check your answers. In between the little, listening part A is the, 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 um, the conversation between the, the patient and the medical practitioner. And it will say, it says, it says, it says something, this section you'll hear, no, you have the headings and you have 10 seconds. The narrator tells you that you have time to, to, to certainly look ahead and look at the notes that you need to take and, certain, and read the heading. In other words, you will have time to check your answers. You shouldn't need extra time at the end. It will be sufficient. Cool. All right, I might leave it there. I hope that was... Yes, Vishnu, you can. I hope that was helpful. Um, what I'll do next time is look at the transformation of case notes that's an important one and also the organization of case notes so do keep coming along to these webinars um, if you have your test on the 5th of august i wish you all the very best if you need some help do check out e2language.com uh, where you can view more of these uh, lectures and methods lessons and also access some practice materials and whatnot um, yes fatima i'll send you this one so if you're a paid e2language.com member please um, send me an email to jay at e2language.com um, and I'll send you this task here because it'll make more sense for you to do it on your computer rather than have me screen sharing it. Anyway, I hope that was helpful. I'll see you guys soon. Ta-ta.